Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. You want the latest news in the streets? Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers. Hope you guys are doing good. So, we got to talk about this viral story that's been viral over the past few days on social media. It's about a young man named Aaron, and he went on that balloon dating show where people can pop the balloon based on, you know, your answers or simply what you look like. The shade, okay? Okay. All right. So we have two ladies mm -hmm. left. All right, y'all know that show. It's viral all over social media. I've never watched the full show, but I always see, you know, the viral clips when some mess happens. So there was a guy on there named Aaron, and Aaron, I guess, is a plumber. He was making really good money. And so his episode has caused a lot of drama. A lot of women, particularly quote unquote black women, were upset with his behavior. People were calling him a Ninja Turtle, saying that he was sassy. Chad was a bunch of drama behind this situation. He even made the shade room. So I'm gonna go ahead and play you guys the clip. Y'all go ahead and check this out and also check out some of the TikTok reactions as well. This man gets rejected because he's sassy. Oh, welcome. <laughs> I'll have you hold this. All right, if we can have your name. Uh, my name is Aaron. Aaron, how old yes, are you? Yeah, I'm 29. 29, okay, yes. and what do you do? Uh, I'm a licensed plumber. And now what are some of your deal breakers? Uh, deal breaker, being promiscuous, <laughs> not cleanly, <laughs> don't have a career, nothing really going for yourself. Okay, so we did get a yeah. pop balloon. Go ahead and go on over there, see what's going on. Yes. All mm -hmm. right, if we can have your name and age and why you popped your balloon. Hi, my name is Karma, I'm 24. Um, For me, it just did not work. I didn't feel like I had chemistry or I wasn't fully attracted to you. And I feel like that counts if we are gonna be going through a dating show, you know? Yes, the feeling is definitely mutual. So, uh, that's okay. Thank you. You did me a favor. No, absolutely. Yeah. I'm glad you have a great day. Thank you, Queen. You too. Okay. Well, let's go ahead. And... All right. We got to pop over here. Oh, shy. A wild single thirsty woman appear. I choose you, Aaron the plumber. Thirsty woman used kind judgment. It's super effective. My sisters, this Ninja Turtle plumber man, let's talk about it for a second. This is how I know my black community is having a really hard time identifying abusers. That man's eyes are dead. You literally watched him disrespect four black women in a row, completely unwarranted and very rudely on like a national platform. And then we now hear from his exes that he has abusive behaviors. My loves, do not use your energy on this Juneteenth to help Aaron the plumber, okay? Let's not do that. The man deserves what he's getting. This is his karma coming back to him. Pop balloon over here, your name and age and why you ended up popping your balloon. Look at how he's looking, yo! Nigga, he looking low. He went straight for the knee tags. He not even making eye contact. He literally dead just looking at her knees. Nothing else. All right, so you guys just saw those clips. So now what's going down is this. He took to his Instagram page to basically let the world know that he has been fired from his job for basically clout chasing. So he posted this two days ago. He says, all this clout chasing got me fired from work. Man, I really love plumbing and I'm good at it. They got that taken from me. Y'all are sick. They called the company 500 times and are messing up businesses. And then on top of that, he also tried to go to church and he was unable to get into his church as well. This is a hot fucking mess. Y'all go ahead and check this out. Can't even go into a fucking place of worship, bro. This shit is crazy. I swear to God, this shit is fucking crazy. Can't even go into a fucking place of worship bro this shit is crazy i swear to god this shit is fucking all right so you guys just saw that so a lot of people are really upset about this of course a lot of men are upset 
And again, it's turning into the whole black women versus black men debate about, you know, black women getting a black man, a hardworking black man fired from his job. This is ridiculous. He wasn't even that disrespectful. So I'm on TikTok and I'm watching the guy, Aaron the Plumber from Pop the Red Balloon. Um, and he's saying how he got fired from his job and now he can't go to church and just crazy stuff. But I'm kind of confused because I'm like, on the show, like, yes, he was a jerk, but he didn't seem like he was fronting for the show. He seemed like that was a true personality. So why would anybody from his community be surprised by that? Like, he didn't seem like he was performing. He seemed like that shit was coming out like his first language. Like, it's crazy to me. Um, I didn't watch the videos that he posted, so I guess there might be more to it. I know I saw something that was like, um, people were contacting his job and like, he got so many phone calls and I guess they just had to fire him. But I'm just like, why are they shocked? Like, he seems like he's like that on a regular. He seems like he comes to work like that. He's in church like that. He's on the streets in the grocery store like that. Like, he didn't seem like he was put on a show like at all. So we got Aaron the plumber. This whole situation off the chain, man. Y'all done got this man fired. Y'all done called this man job over 500 times and got this man fired. You know, it's it's unfortunate. And it's, it's, you know, I don't think that should have been called for. That whole balloon pop situation, man, his responses, I get it. I get why, you know, we got some women who disagree with his demeanor, his delivery, what he's saying, how he's saying, I get it completely. But if I want to play devil's advocate, I I feel him. I feel where he coming from as far as, you know, what he wants from a woman, what he expects from a woman. And by him being a man, look, this is what I'm providing, but this is what I want in return. I, I feel that. I don't agree with his delivery or how he, you know, moved to his thing, but I do kind of feel where he coming from. That man just know what he want. And he's just, you know, he's he's honest with himself and he's honest with the host and, and the other girls, the contestants. But that was kind of crazy how that man got fired, man, from going viral. I don't think he deserved that one, though. But shout out to Aaron the Plumber, man. We gone about who I allow into my life because women do happen to like these big muscles though. These big turtle muscles though. Oh wait. But yeah, anyway, um, you know, turtles got the hardest shell. So I appreciate, you know, all the love, all the hatred. But Chandler came up to her and uh, he handed her his phone, phone. He handed her the phone just like this. Uh, so I look at, I turn to look at her. Like I just said, you don't address another man. I turn to look at her. I said, that's what you're doing, baby. She said, yeah. Oh, what? I turned around. You're disqualified immediately because you don't know what the prize look like. Your eyes still wandering, baby. I found my match. You know, we about to have a ball. Now, I will say this again, when you have things to lose and you live a comfortable lifestyle and you like your job, you don't go on things like this because it leaves too much room for interpretation. And you have a lot of immature people out here, people who will dox, they'll dox your address, they will call your job. They'll do all types of bullshit simply based off of the fact that they don't like you or that you went viral on social media. So again, when you have things to lose, you have to move accordingly. But I don't agree with people getting him fired from his job. But I'm also not liking the narrative that this was somehow all black women who did this. And, you know, black women are just crazy and jealous and upset and things like that. Because what a lot of people don't know is that his ex-girlfriend, who was a Mexican, by the way, okay? She's a spicy la 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 Latina. Shout out to my Latinas out there, honey, okay? So she came out and she was talking about the abuse and the drama that she went through with this, with this man. She made like a five-part series about how this man stalked her. He would leave his phone in her car and record conversations. He put sugar in her tank. 
that he was basically very abusive and um, she eventually got away from him. But I think that might have more pull with this situation than him simply being quote unquote spicy. I think the ex coming out and telling her story was unfortunately the cherry on top. And, you know, for all we know, it could have been a lot of people from her community who was also calling his job because it seems like the way he treated her was totally wrong. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys her video. It's kind of long, but she's kind of breaking down everything she went through with Aaron. So y'all go ahead and check this out. Y'all wanna talk about it? Let's fucking talk about it. This man that you see right now, his name is Aaron. And he was in this video and it went viral. It hit over two million views. And let me tell you, you can see it in real life how crazy he is, how rude and nasty he is. Remember all my stories about how he put sugar in my gas tank, how he put a tracker in my car, how he put his spare cell phone recording at all times to try to catch me at work cheating when I work with nothing but women. Yeah, he would do pop-ups at work and everything. He uses the same excuses over and over again. There's so if you want more story behind this, go ahead and drop it down in the comments. Let me know if you want the full story time behind it because it can get very detailed, very graphic, and I was left very traumatized. I had to move apartments, get a new car. So again, if you want the details, go ahead and drop a comment below. All right, now that we opened the can of worms, let's go ahead and talk about part one of Watch Who The Fuck You Date. So his name is Aaron. Aaron is my ex. We dated for a few months and it didn't last very long. And let me tell you why. He is like insane it's like he has that little person talking to him in the corner of his shoulder at all times like he's making up constant stories in his head about like that i'm cheating on him that he's got to watch his back that i have guys in my apartment at all times and that i'm cheating while i'm at work when i work in a clinic full of women by the way so let's take it back to to the beginning so again we met i lived in arizona he lived in new mexico and he said oh i have a friend that lives in arizona i was actually just there i was like oh dang well whenever you're down here again let's grab dinner or whatever he's like all right he ended up coming and his plan was to end up moving to arizona anyway with his friend right he ended up at my house so much anyway that i was just kind of like mm, i mean you kind of already live here his clothes was there everything so i was like fuck it just you know that was my mistake so uh, my mom ends up making dinners for us all the time. We're Mexican. We make huge dinners. And the first time he went, he met the family and everything was cool. But when we left, my mom called me. and She said, are you OK? And I said, what do you mean? Am I OK? She said, well, I see something in his eye like he wants to hurt you or like he wants to control you. I don't know how to tell you because I don't want you to think that I'm crazy. But I'm just telling you to be careful and really think about if this is the guy that you really want to be with and I was like well I mean it kind of is already in motion you know it's already happening so then my mom invites us over for dinner again I think it was the next day and we play loteria and um I guess he was just like no I don't want to go like he he started little by little kind of not, not like not wanting to be around my family and I don't know if he noticed that my family didn't really like approve of him or whatever I'm not too sure, but anyways, that was a red flag number one. It's kind of like he was already trying to distant me from my own family, you know, like the only protection that I have had is from my family and he was trying to move me away. So when I first started talking to him, I was talking to other people as in I had a lot of guy friends and I don't hang out with too many girls because sometimes it can get overwhelming and a lot of drama can start. So they would still text my phone and um, of course, I talked to somebody else before I met him, too. It kind of just ended up going in the direction with Aaron. And so they would text my phone and he would check my phone every few hours. Every time a vibration would go off, every time I'd get a notification, he's looking at me like he wants to, like, literally do something to me. I don't know what was going on. It's just that look in his eyes. And you guys know because you have seen that look in the pop the balloon game, like this video that went viral. So um, he starts checking my phone every few hours. He starts to track my location. I gave him my location on my phone because I was like, I have nothing to hide, right? And I'm always either at work with him at home or with my family. So go ahead and go to part two. 
all right welcome back to part two of watch who you date we're talking about aaron the guy that went viral on pop the balloon game so anyways he starts to distance me from my family he starts to track me i give him my location because i had nothing to hide every time i would walk by the window my, my location would show that i was outside so he'd call me like what are you doing outside who are you messing with that work why aren't you working like that controlling right then he starts doing pop-ups at my job and it got so bad because he would show up in his work truck while he's supposed to be at work at my job that my supervisor had to keep watching me we had to basically like everybody had to walk me to my car after work to make sure that i made it and the girls would text me hey did you make it again it's a clinic full of girls so that was a red flag number two and then one time I walked outside to the cafeteria and he calls me and he's like, how did I know you were outside? So that in my head was like, mm, circles are already turning. I go to my car to see if he put a tracker because he is capable of doing some shit like that. And I couldn't find anything. And then he pops up at my job like, don't break up with me. Don't do this. Like, I'll change. I thought I was going to catch you doing something. And I was like, how did you know I was outside? Right. He said, I put my extra phone tracking you in your car and I left it on record because I was expecting to record you doing something as in cheating on me or like messing around in your car. And I was like, I was done. After that, I was completely done. I said, get your stuff get out of my house and come bring me my key and he was like no i'm gonna change whatever i went home he was still there he was like let's try to work it out i was like mm. you know he already lives with me he moved here like whatever and that and then it was going i was going to do it so bad and then i he went to go get coffee for me or something from starbucks and he was like something's wrong with your car and i was like what do you mean something's wrong with my car He's like, yeah, it started to act weird. And I was like, okay, hold on right there. My car, I have a 2019 Dodge Challenger. It's been perfectly fine. I kept up with the oil. I don't understand. All of a sudden you're driving it and something's wrong with it. Go to part three. So I never actually got to see any of the money. I remember one time he like withdrew some money and he had like $20 in there and he had to call his dad or something to like transfer money because all of his money was in a trust fund but one time he was really really mad at me and threw the text free app because i had his number blocked he texted me a picture of his bank account which this is the receipt his name right there aaron i don't know what pro extra member means i have no idea what all of this means supposedly this was his balance on one account and this was his balance on another now do i believe it not necessarily again i didn't let him pay for anything because i didn't want him to have the right to any of the things that i own but he would complain about spending twenty dollars here and twenty dollars there so do i actually believe that he has that amount of money in the bank i don't but he is a licensed plumber only because i helped him apply for some jobs here in arizona and i actually know where exactly he works and everything like i have his email his credentials everything so he is a licensed plumber i don't know if he's employed with the same company because i haven't kept up with him ever since i blocked him i try to close that can of worms but this is the answer to your question she said how did it all start what were the red flags so again it started online everything was super good like it flowed so well the person that you see online there is not the person that i met like he masked it so well he must have learned all of these tricks when he was getting his record or something because he was very manipulative very controlling the red flags were him trying to distance from me from my family me basically paying everything um he was very controlling he wanted to check my phone every few hours he wanted to know where i was every second of the day instead of being at work when he's supposed to be at work he's over here popping up at my job um he again put a recorder in my car i dropped it on all the three other parts him always saying how much money he had and how much money that he could pull out of the bank like you've seen in the pop pop the balloon game video that went viral he'll say i could withdraw 100k from the bank right now but can you yeah i had some debts here and there but i always had money stashed because i was taught to never tell a man that you have money or like that you have a stash or whatever so he would always be like you're so broke like you can't um afford me like just shit like that when he'd get mad he'd say the most but then go and apologize and cry about it um 
but he actually does have a kid he just doesn't think it's his but he does have a kid he even has a trust fund in the name of that kid um i do even have a receipt of him saying that he has over a hundred thousand k like dollars in the bank part three and this is the last part that i'm gonna post about aaron the buff guy from pop the balloon game and watch who the fuck you date so um he was like, yeah, your car's acting funny. I was like, no. At that point, I was like, I already get out of my house. Like, I don't want you here. You ain't paid one bill. You put $20 a light one time. And maybe you spent like $30 on groceries because I was going to cook dinner one time. But my mama always told me, do not allow a man to come into your home and pay any bills because then he's going to feel like he has the right to either stay there or like, oh, I paid the rent. I live here too. But in all reality, everything that I, that I had gotten was mine and I didn't allow him any part of that. So um, I was like, all right, get out, whatever. He leaves. Um, he still tried to contact me. I was like, no, get out. I grabbed my car. I went to my mom's house because I didn't want him to try to come back and to try to convince me. And um, that's what brings to like my mind all the time. Like you guys tell people in abusive relationships all the time, like you need to leave, you need to leave. Thinking that it's easy for these women to leave. And it's not like, yeah, they've they've gotten hurt or whatever, but these women are completely head over heels in love with these men so it's not easy to leave so i did what i thought was best so i went to my mom's house right after and he's calling me like dang you're already at somebody else's house you're already cheating on me i was like whatever and on my way to my mom's i start to feel that my car is starting to shake and i'm like dang like what is it i took it to two different mechanics that were like it was the spark plugs the ignition coils i fixed that and then I went to another mechanic because it started to shake again. And supposedly it was the same thing. They fixed that again. So I went to a third mechanic and he's like, I think they might have put sugar in your gas tank, but I would need to take out the gas tank to make sure. And I was like, no, I don't think he would be capable of doing something like that, whatever. So I can find what was wrong with it. At this point, I had moved out already because I was so scared. My mom had let me borrow money because I needed to move out before my lease was up. So he didn't know where I lived. I moved apartments. So at this point, I went and got a new car. I went to the dealership and I got a new car. I changed my car. And when I asked him, hey, did you ever find out what was wrong with my Challenger? He said, yes, there was sugar in the gas tank. So this man that claims to be very godly and studies the Bible and, you know, practices this religion, put sugar in my gas tank, tracked my car, put a phone to record me in my car. And I would do things like say everything he needed to hear, like, yeah, I cheated on you. Like, because I was so scared of him being crazy like this guy has a record you guys don't know that you guys really need to be careful who you make famous on this app i don't want to say anything else because i feel like i already opened up a big can of worms if you guys have any questions i'll, I'll answer them but i don't want to make this any more parts all right so i'm um, just going to give you guys an update and this is the last i'll probably be talking about it um so everybody keeps asking me what was the purpose of you um outing him or making these videos and it's because i needed to bring awareness to a lot of women out there he is constantly on different dating apps because this is what all the other girls are telling me and they're going through the same situations and you know a master manipulator is super easy to act super sweet and very consistent and then boom it's like a switch triggers um there's this girl going around Facebook right now stating that he put her, his hands on her and that he's lying, telling everybody that she stole his wallet. She's already contacted the authorities and um, he like posted her and was like, I'll give anybody $500 who has any information on her. You know, he's like that. He he did that he popped up with me at work with my family like he's just gonna do what he wants to do or what he has to do to get what he wants um now update with me he did make a fake profile he did make a fake profile i think it's called your dot not dot qualified and um he was commenting under some of my videos early this morning he is blocked um, I don't doubt that he's going to make other profiles and basically he was giving out false information and I mean all the proof is there. I really have nothing to prove and so that is the update. I am being careful. I am around my family. I'm not alone right now and you know 
that is the end of it. I'm not bringing it up anymore. I have moved on. I just wanted to bring awareness to everybody around the situation or similar situations. He did not put his hands on me, but I knew he was going to with the way he already acted towards me. Exactly, this is one of the reasons why I started to tell my story. And after I told my side of the story, so many women have came forward. Now this girl I found on Facebook, well, it was sent to me. And she's basically saying that they hung out and he's going around stating he got $500 on whoever finds her because that she stole his wallet or whatever, but he actually physically put hands on her. You can see it. This is her original post. I just cropped her name off of it. I don't want to expose her. I don't want to put her in any danger. So this is the Facebook post. Um, she says she works really hard for her money. It looks like she's a single mom as well. And that he's like airing her out to whoever. This is a picture of him. And that's her little story. Um, if she wants to come out and tell her story, that is completely up to her. It did take me a little while to come out with my side of the story. I didn't know if I wanted to do it. But again, the reason why I did it was because I wanted other women to be safe. I wanted other women to feel like they can come forward to any type of experience um, of abuse that they have been through. And, you know, I can keep showing you guys proof if you guys want. But that's that side. All right. So you guys just heard everything that she had to say. I'm about the situation, you know, about him placing trackers in her car, accusing her of cheating and everything else. So it is very unfortunate. I do not agree that he should lose his job. Um, at the end of the day, everybody needs to be able to pay their bills. Everyone needs their livelihood. But again, this is why you have to be careful when chasing social media clout because it can come back to bite. You don't know what X may come out the woodwork. You don't know how women online or men online may take you or your persona. It looks like he's definitely still eating up the drama. He's now selling t-shirts. Um, he's saying you can get your pre-orders ready. People are in the comment sections clowning him and saying these Canva designs are not it, friend. He's now also going on other people's podcasts. And people are saying, you know what, at this point, bro, you're milking it. So a lot of people are kind of calling him out. Like, it seems like you wanted this fame and you're trying to now use this whole thing about you getting fired from your job and can't come out of church and you can't go into the church as a way for you to gain sympathy and clout. Because since then, he's just been posting and you know he's trying to now become a social media influencer. And again, it, you know, it makes sense if people are following him, if he feels like he can get, make more money from social media than being a plumber, I see why he's going that route. But the whole situation is just really crazy, the back and forth, you know, people calling him out, saying, hey, where's your 100K? You know what I'm saying? You claimed you're balling. Why do you need to set up a GoFundMe? Why should we fund your lifestyle when you have all this money in the bank? So he's definitely getting drug. Um, but again, I don't agree with people calling people's jobs. You know, this happens far too much. Um on social media where people want to be everybody's judge, jury, and executioner. And again, if you don't like something, don't tune in, don't give it energy. So if this show bothers people and, you know, it's it's um, problematic in the community, then why are people tuning in every week to watch this balloon popping show? And again, if you have things to lose, you may not want to have that type of persona on social media because as we all know, a lot of people revel in victimhood and they're easily triggered. So why even put yourself in that situation? But I leave the conversation up to you guys. I wanna hear from y'all. What do y'all think about this messy viral situation that came from this balloon popping show? How do you guys feel about Aaron, you know, allegedly getting fired from his job, unable to go into the church? Do you feel like he's being all the way honest? Do you feel like he's just clout chasing? And then do you also feel like this wasn't necessarily black women who quote unquote took him down, but that his ex-girlfriend, you know, who told her story, that probably played a bigger catalyst into him losing his job and him getting called out and things like that. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave your comments down below. Make sure you guys hit this video with a like. Feel free to share the video and I will talk to you later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity, so sell your friends and your family. It's the Lovely TV Show, bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the Lovely TV Show, be sure to share, like, and subscribe.